Should I look at you or at the camera? I think me. We're almost the same. <laughs> so we're here with Eric Sivain, and he is from France. He came all the way to Washington to give us some wisdom on uh, foreign policy, maybe we could talk about, since he's from France, maybe has a different perspective. We can talk in a very broad perspective that would apply to any country. So my question in foreign policy is... But first of all, I have to say I'm, first I have to say I'm a Danish-American based in Paris, but I'm not French. But I'm, I'm a foreigner living in Paris for the past 20 years. Okay, so you're a Danish-American, so right. that means you were born in Denmark and oh, sort of... I was born in Europe, let's put it that way. Okay, story. okay no problem. <laughs> Born somewhere in Europe. <laughs> you're European. You're European. You're you're a European, right? I'm I'm half and half. Half oh. European, half American, and uh, okay. I know the it works better in America. You know, the innovation we, we, America you, leads the world. More importantly, you're a human being with a, that can think and has some ideas, and we we'll want your opinions. That's the main part. Right? right. So my question is, do you have a principle that permits you to determine? when a country should go to war against another country right. and when it should not? First of all, I think we should stop personalizing countries. For instance, uh, saying something like the left used to say that Iraq has no done nothing against America. That's not pertinent. We are, there are individuals in Iraq, there are individuals in America in all countries. How, are, how was Saddam Hussein treating his neighbors and his own people? That's the main, that's the main thing. Stop personalizing countries as they were as they were human beings. They'll say also Cuba and America have con con come closer together under the Obama administration. Who cares? How are how is how are the Castro brothers treating the Cuban people? That is what matters. So uh, to go back to your question, go to, going to war. There's some people are always saying war is one of the worst things that can be. It or it is the worst thing that can happen. To, in, in our existence. I say there's something worse. It's when a, a government treats, kills its own people who do not have the benefit of weapons. They don't have the Second Amendment if they're not in America. They cannot defend themselves. The Soviet citizens who were murdered by Moscow, the um, German citizens who were murdered by Berlin in the 1930s and 40s, the Chinese, that is much worse than war. Well, well don't more people die in the war than these specific violations of individual rights? Yeah. More, more people were murdered by, by Stalin, by Hitler, than were killed by German soldiers or American soldiers. Far more. Think about it. The Cambodia, one third of the nation was, was killed. And that was, yeah, no, well, that had, nobody yeah. had, the Cambodians don't have the Second Amendment. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they did or not, but they were overpowered by Pol, Pol Pot. Anyway, uh, so you don't, do you believe in the uh, principle of national sovereignty or no? Certainly, yeah, absolutely. So in that sense, you do uh, respect the fact that there are countries and that uh, you shouldn't uh, interfere with another country unless it's uh, well, done something or other, right? What should we do about the Christians being killed or the Muslims being killed by Saddam Hussein? I'm not saying that that is, okay, we need to do this automatically, but that needs to be thought about. Right now, we're, I think we're, work, we're living in the, the, United, in the pr prospect of the United Nations, which is everybody is kind of friendly together, and we'll criticize some, in it, but not everybody. Okay, so you guys... What, oh, sorry. sorry, what usually happens is they don't criticize the worst human rights offenders, and they're always getting down on who the, the two most the two greatest democracies, at least in their perspective region, perspective region of the United States and Israel. Okay, so you've made a, a point here that uh, one government can abuse its people tremendously, like Mao Zedong did and Stalin did, right? Uh, and kill a lot of its own people. I don't think Hitler killed a lot of his own people, but just a, a few. Six million Jews. Okay, well that's a good point. Well, he, Okay, okay, so, well, wait, okay, so, uh, I said you made a good point, right? Okay. Or you want me to retract that? No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, okay, so, but that's not the question. Uh, you also agree that you don't want to go to war uh, improperly or at the wrong time, right? right? So, we're focusing on when you should go to war right. and when you shouldn't. Right. 
Right. And my question, if do you recall, was, do you have a principle that permits you to determine when you, personally, Eric, thinks a country should go to war? I think the, que the, um, the answer is in what the European, America and the European nations did in the, 19, in the eight, 19th century. When they went into Africa, Asia, they took over these countries. There, was, there weren't that big, those, there weren't a lot of battles. People there were happy to have somebody bring control. Think of Uganda. But Uganda I, has you haven't mentioned a principle. What is the principle? The principle I said, I asked you if you had a principle. What human beings' life, how it's being treated in that region. I'm saying we don't necessarily need to intervene. So we should go to war with uh, countries if we uh, don't agree with what's happening in their country. We think they're, they're being...